here now as the MVP of the LCS. Could you have imagined this could have happened? I mean, it's surreal. You know, you, you dream about this stuff when you're a kid. And, uh, you know, shout out to my teammates. You know, we uh, show up every single day. You know, we stay true to ourselves all year. And, uh, yeah, we're a step away from our the ultimate goal. Jeremy, speaking of your teammates, they were really pumped when they announced that you won the MVP up there on the podium. What was going through your mind in that in that moment? And just kind of walk us through what your reaction was to see that kind of support. I mean, it says a lot about our team. You know, we, we root for each other. You know, we do that all year. Uh, we pick each other up. And, you know, it's awesome. It's awesome. You know, we, we've battled all year. And to get to this point, it's special. A little bit further on your right. Jeremy. Eh, caballo, háblame, este, primera temporada en las grandes ligas. Lo mencionaste hace poco que entraste bendecido. ¿Qué se siente estar aquí eh, ya en la Serie Mundial en tu primera temporada? Just talk, to, talk about making it to the World Series in your first season in the majors. No, en verdad que agradecido con el Señor, agradecido con el equipo. Y, y nada, contento. En verdad que esto es un sueño. Eh, muchos muchachos sueñan con esto. Y, y nada, gracias al Señor. ¿Tú ves? Oh, good. Would you mind giving that in English as well, if you don't mind? Right. So I basically you just said it was the same question, pretty much. Uh, no, it's a dream come true to be here. You know, shout out to my teammates. Um, and yeah, it's just going to enjoy it. And we, we we know we still got work to do. Una más, eh, Jeremy. Este, entraste ser reemplazando a Carlos Correa, ¿no? Eh, mucha presión, responsabilidad sobre ti. ¿Qué tanto te enorgullece el trabajo que has hecho y ser nombrado el MVP. No, en verdad que yo nunca lo vi así. Yo nunca lo vi que estaba reemplazando a Carlos Correa. Lo que él hizo aquí en Houston, una leyenda aquí en Houston y fue bueno conmigo. Me ayudó bastante. Y nada, siempre agradecido con lo que él ha hecho por mí. Y solamente vine a Spring Training con la mentalidad de que iba a competir por una posición. Y gracias al Señor se me dio. Cumplí un sueño que jugué la Grandes Ligas. Y gracias a él estamos aquí a un punto de la serie mundial. Go to the second row. Um, Jeremy, I don't know how good your vantage point was in that seventh inning play, the misplay between Isaiah kind of for left and Gleyber Torres, since you were the one, you know, trying to reach base, but being a shortstop yourself, I was curious, what did you sort of see there and what did you think about um, just sort of what happened there that you guys were then able to take advantage of? Uh, so I didn't really see the play. You know, I put the ball in play and I knew they had an opportunity for a double play. So I just put my head down and I was trying to get to first base. You know, once I hit the bag and I looked up, I saw the ball was, you know, they missed missed it for some reason. I don't I don't know what happened, but I saw too it was still on base, so I knew they uh mishandled the ball. Um and just to follow up, sorry. Um what is that for the momentum for the team? What did that seventh inning do? How did it change the way obviously we know that it was decisive, but what was the energy like for you guys to realize that you come back and maybe now we're on the cusp of what you know what you've accomplished now right so their their pitchers have great stuff you know and whenever you could get a runner on base it's a plus you know we always try to pass the baton to the next guy and when we got on base you know Jordan's been coming through for us all year you know he came through in that situation and then Bregman you know I, I say that was the the biggest at bat of the game you know it, Holmes is a tough dude you know, he's tough, and uh, Bragman managed to put together a great at-bat. Go to Chelsea. At Jeremy, you guys made this look pretty easy from the outside all year, honestly. I mean, was it? And, like, what, what challenges do people maybe not see that you guys have kind of had to work your way through to get here? I would say not easy. You know, it was, uh, definitely was not easy. You know, there was a lot of work that went into this. You know, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, you know, and uh, – this team stuck with one another. You know, we rooted for one another, and we picked each other up all year, and we battled all year, and uh, it's great to be here at this point. We'll go to Pete, the first row. Jeremy, you, you played in a lot of cold weather growing up, and it probably wasn't always easy. Was this, you know, what's <laughs> going on now, something in the back of your mind that, that you could get to a point like this? I mean, this was great weather, <laughs> you know, compared to what I played growing up, you know, high school and college, and but... Yeah, it's playoffs, you know, and the weather, you know, you sh it shouldn't be a factor in your mind, you know. I meant it more as a case of when you were, you know, when you were growing up playing there, you know, did you have this in your mind that, that you could be a big league player, that you could be in the ALCS? You know, was was that part of your dreams when you were growing up? Of course. You know, every kid dreams about hitting a walk-off home run in the World Series with 
bases loaded, two outs, down by three, you know, and, uh, <laughs> you know, that was definitely my dream. You know, I always dreamed about being a big leaguer, you know, and, uh, yeah, grateful, grateful to be here. You know, this is a blessed opportunity. We get to play this game every single day, and uh, yeah, we're going to make the best out of it. Take a couple last ones in the fourth row. Jeremy, yo sé que ahorita estás disfrutando este momento y es tiempo de celebrar, pero pensando un poquito en lo que sigue, ¿no? lo más importante todavía, eh, los Phillies, último e equipo que enfrentaron la temporada regular, ¿qué saben de ellos? No los enfrentaron mucho, ¿qué saben y qué reto presentan? Bueno, ahora mismo vamos a disfrutar este momento y sabemos que ellos están jugando bien, eh, tienen una armonía de unidad, están, están jugando bien y no, nosotros vamos a disfrutar de esto y después veremos que sea lo que el Señor quiera. Y la otra es, este, la afición de los Yankees pidió a Houston, decía, we want Houston. Ahora, los Phillies también, la afición, dicen lo mismo. ¿Eso qué significa para ustedes como peloteros cuando escuchan que las aficiones de los oponentes están pidiendo enfrentar a ustedes? Bueno, eh, todo el mundo tiene su opinión, ¿me entiendes? Todo el mundo tiene su opinión y nosotros jugamos para la gente que nos apoya, ¿me entiendes? Nosotros no nos enfocamos en lo negativo, no nos enfocamos en la gente que nos quiere derrumbar. Nosotros jugamos para la gente que nos apoya, para Houston y para todos los, los fanáticos que nos quieren ver triunfal. Hey Dusty, congratulations. Thank you. Um, what does this mean for you to be coming back to the World Series and what is it about this team you think that, that made it you know, so special that they're able to do this? Well, yeah, I mean, this is our second year in a row and uh, it's hard to do. It's a long road to get here. Uh, th there's a lot that happens in the months, you know, to get here from, from spring training. And uh, it means that we persevered and uh, and we stayed together, and we made the necessary trades when we had to had to try to strengthen certain parts of our of our team. And uh, <clears throat> I mean, these guys are very close knit, you know, a bunch of guys. And uh, you know, that was on our minds the whole spring training was getting back to this point. And it's a wonderful thing when you accomplish a you know a goal. And uh, So we got one more goal to go, and then we can set some new goals. Daniel? Dusty, for you individually, you've been in this game for so long, managing yeah. for 25 years and coming so close to the World Series title last year. Yeah. Just how hungry were you coming into the season to well, get that elusive ring? Well, you know, I stay hungry. And, uh, you know, people, some people, most people are rooting for us. Some people are rooting against us. It doesn't matter. That motivates you. Uh, either way, there's a lot of positive thoughts coming our way. There's a ton of positive <coughs> thoughts and, and, and spiritual togetherness in, in the city of Houston. You know, it's galvanized our, our team. Uh, you know, I've never seen a city uh, <coughs> so close to their players and, and always behind their players. You know, like I've never heard a crossword or, or anybody boo, you know, in our town, uh, the team, and that means a lot. I mean, I mean, it means an awful lot. That means that there's love and and respect and, uh, and togetherness there. Dusty, why do you feel like this team is more well-equipped than last year's to win it all? Well, number one, we got Lance McCullers that we didn't have uh, uh, and going into the World Series, and, and we have Justin Verlander uh, <clears throat> going into the World Series that we didn't have. Uh, we have some young guys that are, that are you know, have been there before. You know, you look at Framberg, you look at Garcia, you look at um, – Javier and, and, and some of the young guys that had never been there before. And uh, last year, Pena was on the taxi squad. And, uh, you know, which, uh, you know, he was paying attention and uh, yearning to be on the team, to, you know, to get to the World Series. And here he is now. A year ago, he was on the taxi squad. And now he's MVP, you know, of the series. And so I think that's going to motivate some of the young kids that are on the taxi squad now. And, uh, You know, these guys, that's, I mean, we want, we want it. And uh, uh, we earned it, and we think we deserve it, but it's not, nobody's going to give it to you. You got to go out and take what you want. Pete? Dusty, you mentioned Jeremy. Um, obviously, replacing a very good player at shortstop. Oh, yeah. What has he meant for you that he was able to hold down that position all year and now be the MVP of the LCS? Well, I mean, it, I mean, you know, he's had a lot of support. You know, he has a lot of support from his mom and dad and from his teammates here. And, you know, he's a very uh, um, confident but humble young man. And, uh, uh, you know, he's in a position <clears throat> where, you know, people say it's hard to win with a young shortstop catcher and center fielder and young pitching staff, but 
I mean, he's grasped the situation, um, you know, the responsibility of that, you know, and he's hitting second in order and, 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 and playing shortstop. You know, I mean, that's a lot of responsibility and a lot of work, and, you know, he hasn't shied away from it, and he's actually embraced it. In the second row. Um, Dusty, apologies if this has been asked, but once again in the seventh inning this, um, in this game, your team capitalized on an error from mm -hmm. the Yankees and then went on to score those two runs that end up being decisive. What is it about this group of guys that you have that enable them to take advantage of those miscues well, and then a, turn them into wins? Well, that's a very good question. I mean, you can't always do that, but you, it's a thought process that you have. And, and, you know, to a man almost, they were saying, hey, boys, there's our break. You know what I mean? And, and if you think this is a break, uh, uh, you know, you can turn it into a break. It starts at, you know, with a thought process. You know, it's like, even if it's not a break, you got to pretend that it's a break. And then next thing you know, boom, we got two runs out of it. And, uh, you know, the power of positive thinking can take you, and the power of belief can take you a long ways into to great heights. Um, and just a quick follow-up. Obviously, this is probably the most competitive game of the series, still a sweep, but mm -hmm. what was it about, you know, again, what is it about your team that you guys were able to bounce back, keep punching back, and not um, worry that, like, the Yankees might steal one? Instead, you guys were able to just close it out in four. Well, you know, uh, um, <clears throat> the thing about this team is that, you know, they don't panic. You know, they never panic. They try, they try to find a way. And, uh, you know, it was early in the game. You'd rather have that happen to you early in the game because you got time to, to, to come back and rebound. Uh, but it helped us. You know, we could tell that something was wrong with, with, with Nestor because, you know, we've never seen him throw that many balls. Usually he has pinpoint control, and so that, you know, that helped us a lot. I mean, you hate to see a quality guy like like him hurt, but, uh, you know, but you got to take advantage, you know, of that situation. And uh, you got to take advantage of You're looking for an edge always. So, um, you know, that, that helped us a lot, and I hope that, you know, Nestor's okay because he was on the all-star team with me and Judge and, and Holmes. And, you know, you're not supposed to like the opposition, but those are quality, quality guys, you know, Stanton. And, um, you know, they got a great team over there. And the guy that, that came over that I feel close to and close to his dad was, you know, was, was Booney. And so, um, you know, they're not going anywhere. They're going to they're gonna be around for a long time. Take a couple more for Dusty, Pete. Dusty, your, your thoughts on the World Series and facing the Phillies? Well, the Phillies, I mean, they can hit. And, and they got a couple top-of-the-rotation type pitchers. Uh, they got their bullpen together. You know, they play, you know, good defense. And uh, as you saw, they don't quit. And, uh, you know, um, when <clears throat> when they were in town that last series, uh, there's a knock on my door and on the back door. And I had, nobody knocks on the back door. And it was Bryce Harper. And he came in and sat down and we talked for for a long period of time, uh, I wished him well. Uh, I didn't know how well, but you know, I wished him well. And uh, and you know, he told me he says, "Hey, man, they're going to go for it." And you know, because uh, everybody was picking St. Louis over them, and 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 whoever was playing them. But hey, man, they got some, they got some quality guys. You get this far, um, you know, they got the same belief over there that we have over here. So I'm sure it's going to be a great series. Finish up with Daniel. <clears throat> Dusty, you touched on Jeremy's humility and just mm -hmm. how he's kind of handled everything. And, and the comparisons are obviously natural, given that, you know, he's fi filling the shoes of a, you know, a big boy and, and Carlos and everything. But how, how well equipped do you think he was able to do that, given the humility and how he's handled everything? Well, uh, I think he's very equipped, you know, knowing his mom and dad, um, because he comes from a great family. He comes from a baseball family. Uh, his mom's actually got mad to me a little bit because he he didn't play in Boston and there were a bunch of people from Providence, Rhode Island, his town. I, I had to explain, you know, have you ever had to explain something to somebody's mama? You know, it's like, uh, <laughs> and I was like, mama, he's hurt. You know what I mean? That's why he's not playing. And so, um, but I think it's important that Carlos pass the torch, you know, to him because I've seen some players don't pass the torch. You know, I mean, they pass some dynamite and uh but but carlos passed the torch and um you know was a mentor you know to him and uh this is what baseball and life is 
you know, is all about rooting for somebody else because there's a lot of jobs out there. And, you know, we wanted to keep Carlos. Carlos wanted to stay, couldn't get things together. But uh, the organization also felt that Pena was, uh, was the right guy for the job. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, he's exceeded expectations. And then one more real quick. How, did, how special do you think it was to just win the series here I mean, for guys like Altuve and Bregman and mm-hmm. kind of the, the treatment that they've gotten here and yeah. to, to just kind of quiet out that crowd? Well, they got better treatment here this time than, than in previous times here. And so maybe it's a different crowd or maybe the crowd is, has, you know, finally forgiven things of the past. You know, um, I was on radio show with CC Sabathia. He's from my hometown and went to my baseball school when he was a kid and it seems like CC has sort of buried that axe too which helped you know the whole town I think bury the axe. Jeremy you obviously had a big job ahead of you coming into this season to 